Radio style. Hope everybody out there is having themselves a great day as always. Uh, we're doing this one as manifest a specific person considerations. And I don't know, maybe I'll slightly alter the uh, title from what I'm doing right now as far as recording it and what I think I'm going to call it versus what I actually call it uh, when it's uh, all said and done and I'm actually <laughs> uploading it to YouTube. Uh, but all that being said, I absolutely, without a doubt, believe that you can manifest your special someone no matter what. But that's a, there's a really interesting caveat that comes into play. Um, that individual does have say in the matter. There's a lot of people that have kind of commented. I've seen uh, comments everywhere. I've actually had com- uh, conversations with people about this topic. And there's um, a lot of impressions out there that this is black magic, if you will. Now, I will say I've studied magic. I, I don't practice it per se. I've studied it. I've known a number of people that were Wicca and witches and black ones, too. I've met all sorts of very interesting people along my path uh, in life. And and someone had asked me one time to get into some of the things I've manifested. I will get into my past at some point. My past started more, and I think Anya's is very similar, more in a spiritual realm. And I was really trying to elevate my spiritual side before I got into this manifestation thing. That was more of a, oh, hey, this is kind of cool. I didn't realize that's what I've been doing all this time. And so I started studying that as more of a means to uh, try to help other people. I can't tell which way my hat should be. That looks better. Um, uh, so I can't, uh, I, I, I realized that uh, I figured I found a way that maybe I can help other people by trying to help explain these things. Um, and then I try to sprinkle my little spiritual side into it as well, because ultimately I think it's really important that we grow ourselves spiritually. Manifestation becomes very easy to do when you start aligning your chakras, when you get your energies aligned, when you start letting go of maybe some of the karmic patterns that exist. All these kinds of things actually play a big difference in manifesta- uh, manifestation, but We're really focusing on the fundamentals of it. So just understand that in the black magic concept, you still cannot overpower someone's, um, their their, uh, free will, okay? And when it comes to dark magic, uh, what you're doing is you're putting out spells and whatnot, and you are trying to affect people. But the only way you can actually do that is if those people grant you the power to do that. So they maybe are aware, or you might tell them if you're in dark magic, hey, I'm doing X and Y. Then they get scared and go, oh my God, he can control me. By the very nature of doing that, you're giving this person power. So yes, there are ways to do that. Now, what I want to discuss before I get into the heart of this, which I think is also equally important. Say you're someone that's in a very happy relationship. You love where you're at. You love who you're with. And you are, and like looking ahead 20 years, you're still going to be with this person, right? absolutely in love. What if someone is trying to manifest you as their specific someone? How does that play out? How does that play out in your world? Let me give you some examples of how that plays out. In the best case where maybe you're really, really good friends with this individual or close, so you've got an established connection, again, your heart belongs elsewhere and it always will. This individual and you are quite close. This individual, when they're doing their imaginal practices and imagining from you, What, how that plays out for you, and this is how it plays out for other people, mind you, and this is why it works, but this is why in some cases uh, you have control. But understand, I'm, I'm the, you're the person that's being sought after, right? And I'm doing my imaginal activities and I'm imagining being with you. What you experience at that moment is like I might pop into your head and you might have wonderful feelings about me. It might be nice, loving feelings. It might be really nice. Like, ah, man, Dan, he's a really, really great guy. I really like him. And that might be the extent of it. But I'm doing all this imaginal work and I'm trying to, you know, get you to fall in love with me. You're in love with someone else. It's not going to work. You'll think of me fondly. We'll be closer friends. I'll probably notice that you and I get closer and it might make me think things are working along really good. But ultimately, you're not going anywhere. You're going to stay where you're at. That's how that plays out. I can't make you leave your husband. I can't make you leave this person you're with. It, it pops in as a good idea. It pops in as a feeling. It pops in as something that might be interesting. So on the converse of that, say you're trying to specifically manifest somebody into your world. 
that is open to you, or at least not closed to the idea, okay? Now, maybe they don't know you very well, but it starts off as that feeling and how that plays out in that person's head is as it happens more and more and more, that feeling starts to build within them, and then they start to think about you. Then they start to spend time imagining you. Then they start, it starts, so it starts to create that energy, and that is how that manifestation really plays out. It's not instant. It's not like they get hit over the head and I must have Dan. You know, it doesn't play out like that. That's not even close. The idea pops into their head, the idea of me and like, oh, he's a really nice guy. And then over time, it starts to build and they're like, wow, I kind of, I don't know, I just find myself really liking this person. And then all of a sudden you bump into each other and there's a chemistry and you know what I mean? Like, that's how it plays out. So please understand that when it comes to manifesting your specific someone, I believe no matter what, you can manifest specific people for sure. But I do think there are times when universe, source, God, whatever, might say, yeah, no, sorry, this is not a place where that should happen. Now, some of the reasons behind why it might not happen, I think it's important to cover because I think there are going to be times where people, we're going to try to manifest and try to get someone back into our lives. And these are the places specifically almost where I'm more concerned. Um, or even trying to manifest maybe like a movie star. That would be kind of, you could maybe, but ah, again, you're, you're, you're reaching in a very specific odd location that might not ever come to fruition because that individual always has free will, always has free will. And and there is this uh, opportunity, I can talk more about this in other shows, of, of multiple life uh, paths and, and multiple um, uh, the parallel realities. And, you know, there, there are probably possibilities where maybe in another reality you could end up with that person, but wh whatever. Let's leave that for another show and another rainy day or something crazy. Let's just keep it with a kind of simpler side. But if you're in a situation where maybe you're out of the relationship because you've hurt someone, you've hurt them dearly, you cheated on them, or I mean, cheating can be healed, mind you, but if there's a place where you've kind of really hurt or damaged an individual and now you're wanting to get back, nah, that's probably not a good idea to try to manifest that specific someone. Um, if you do get back, you still possibly are looking at some of the dysfunctions that existed to begin with. If neither one of you has truly evolved or grown, then you're almost looking to get back into some of the old, uh, old habits. Uh, damage is kind of on the same line. Violence, were you violent? Were you maybe abusive? Were you being abused? You know, like these sorts of things uh, are worthy of consideration as well. If the relationship was not healthy, and it was, in fact, I would say unhealthy uh, for that matter, um, these are times where it's maybe better to grow and move from this situation and that there's possibly someone in your path that maybe is more... I don't want to say appropriate, but that's kind of what I'm saying, right? Like a little more fitting for where you're at, for where your energy is. And as Law of Attraction talks about, we get what our energy is putting out. So wherever we're vibrationing or vibrating at, I guess is probably a better word, then that is what we're attracting back to us. So if you're trying to attract something that's not necessarily a vibrational match, then really we need to work on our vibration. And if you have been damaging to someone, if you work on kind of realizing where you've, where you've fallen short and, and work on increasing and behaving and getting better and, and enhancing your energy and becoming a nicer, better person, well, then it does become possible because you've made the changes that will actually affect the outcome and the possibilities of this occurring. Uh, did you inhibit their freedom? Were you controlling? Did you uh, try to manipulate? This is something that I, maybe women are sometimes even guilty of, where maybe we do a little controlling or we might manipulate with, uh, with sex. That's a great uh, example of something that's used to control uh, men because we're very simple creatures and, you know, eat, sleep, sex. Uh, it pretty much covers our basics, right? Um, again, not saying all women do that because men can be very controlling, very, very uh, uh, damaging in those regards too, and very powerful at it. It's, so it's a horrible version uh, when a man does these same kinds of controlling behaviors. But again, if you had a very uh, unhealthy relationship and this is the person that you're specifically trying to get back, be careful. That's all I'm saying. Be careful. You might not succeed. You might. But you also might be opening back up the same Pandora's box that you've already opened. You might be going back to the same level of crazy. And really, you need to look at why you're doing it. Am I afraid to be alone? Am I afraid that I'll never find someone again? Like, <clears throat> If these are your sponsoring thoughts, we need to deal with those thoughts first. And then you will find yourself an amazing relationship and probably with someone else. Now, on the specific side... Uh, well, okay, I guess, is there someone more suited was kind of, I guess, the point where I was trying to go with, with a lot of these things, where if you've, 
um, been kind of trying to manifest someone that's mm, maybe not the best choice for you. Um, am I hanging on because I don't want to let go? Uh, am I hanging on because my ego's bruised? I don't want, uh, I don't want someone to be rejecting me. Like that's not acceptable. Um, am I trying to hinder my growth, right? Maybe, maybe this was one of those things where I'm growing from this situation and who I become from it is going to be amazing. So me trying to manifest, sometimes our higher self or source or whatever might say, let's give it a few months and then see where you're at. But ultimately, no, because you're growing. And when you finally get to this new plateau, you're not going to want to be with that person anymore. So that factor sometimes comes into play. Um, am I afraid I will never find happiness again. Again, kind of going back to that, what I already mentioned, but am I trying to relive something because I'm fearful that I can't have something else? Again, fear is never a good uh, response. Um, you know, there's a, there's a kind of an adage that goes with it, F everything and run. Like that kind of fear response is great. That's more of that third chakra I was talking about on my last show. Like, yeah, there's a problem in your immediate environment. You probably need to boogie and get the heck out of the way. But when it's an emotional fear, eh, not, that's not good. That's, um, that's, uh, that's something that needs to be looked at and healed. And really, typically, fear is more of a representation of being focused on the past and not really looking forward into the future. And again, you're kind of stuck in an odd uh, thought process. So again, if you're trying to manifest a specific person and these reasons come into play, spend a little time working on what's damaged, what needs some improvement, um, and then from there try to manifest your specific somebody or manifest even sometimes better the right relationship into your life. And you can imagine how you'd like that to play out and just kind of leave the face fuzzy in your imaginal work. But imagine where you're going. Imagine holding hands. Imagine uh, going to shows together. Imagine vacationing together. Imagine all these things together. And then you attract, you put out to the universe that energy. And then based off the vibration you currently have, that's what you're sending out. That's what you're going to bring back to you. And that oftentimes will get you into a healthy, happy, good relationship rather than trying to rekindle something that maybe isn't a good relationship. Now, all that being said, what if both parties uh, uh, both parties have a say in this, I guess. I, the way I wrote these notes are horrible. <laughs> um, one thing that's also very good to keep in mind when you're trying to manifest a specific someone, and this is something I do in my particular practice and behaviors um, when it comes to manifesting the love of my life, um, one thing I always started off with is what's best for all involved parties is what I would, if this is best for all involved parties, then allow this to happen. Or if it's in the divine right plan, uh, is also syntax that I use frequently, then let this happen. I start with that because I don't want to manifest someone into my life. I know I'm very powerful and I know I could probably manifest someone that's even questionable, Right. Um, because I do have a strong energy and I'm very capable of focusing it. And I've actually experienced the outcomes of what happens when I focus it on specific people. And I've had uh, some interesting uh, experiences around that. So sometimes it's very important to keep in mind that um, what's best for you and them, and even maybe some other parties, maybe they're in a re relationship or they have a child or something like that. You want to make sure that this is best for all people involved. And if that's the case, a lot of times you can get confirmation and you can work from that angle. Now, if none of these things apply to the person that you're trying to manifest, maybe it's someone that you've known, maybe it's someone that you sort of kind of dated, but then something happened. Maybe there's a long distance action to it. Um, maybe, uh, you know, like I said, I down here, uh, we got mistakes we might've made. Maybe we said something horrible and pissed them off and pushed them away, but that can be fixed. That's not forever. Um, location, maybe they're in a weird place. Locations are easy to fix. Uh, Agnes is a great example for those of you that know her and familiar with her. Her, her, um, her significant other is in another country, uh, and she goes and sees him, uh, I think, four times a year. Uh, so again, location's not a, a deal breaker, and there are sometimes ways to uh, narrow that location distance if necessary. Um, schedules, maybe they're, uh, they work overnights and you work during the day and just getting together was just very difficult or they were always a zombie or whatever the case. Um, lifestyle issues, maybe they were into drugs or they got to a point where they were drinking too much or something like that. Again, these are things that can be healed and these are things that when dealt with and, and these people become maybe a better match vibrationally with us, then again, yes, it's a perfect time to look at, um, to look at maybe getting back uh, in together. Uh, with each other. Also, situations where someone's maybe in an unhappy marriage for legitimate reasons. I mean, maybe the person they're married to is not good to them. Maybe they're cheating on them. Maybe they're 
abusive. Maybe they're like, there's unhappy marriages that staying married, even if kids are involved, are not necessarily the best choice. Sometimes staying married to someone, even because of a kid, and then that kid grows up seeing a, 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 a relationship that's, that's not good, not healthy. So now they're learning what a relationship is based off of you and your husband, and that is the lessons they're going to take into their life. That, that's what they're going to think is normal. So again, sometimes what we are showing our children, as much as we want to keep them from being able to experience pain or anything, which you can't, your kids are going to experience pain and should, that's part of growing, right? All of us have been through pain, but sometimes that whole experience can uh, benefit all involved, including the person that's being abusive, maybe the, the bad spouse. You know, they get out of the situation, maybe they spend some time working on themselves, maybe they end up with someone that's more appropriate for them. Again, having that ability to kind of heal and extend out and, and find what's appropriate for us where we're at in life is a very, very powerful thing. I already kind of mentioned long distance. Sometimes finances too can come into play. Maybe um, maybe they were a little demanding as far as what they wanted uh, and you just couldn't afford them. Uh, and so it didn't work out, but you actually liked each other a lot. Uh, these kinds of things also can, can work themselves out. So again, being specific about why you're choosing the person you're choosing and trying to be very honest with ourselves, I think will help uh, us answer those questions and we'll go miles uh, to answering those questions. So hopefully this makes sense and hopefully this helps for sure. But I, I kind of wanted people, I wanted to address the whole, uh, just because I'm trying to manifest someone specific doesn't mean that person doesn't have say in the matter. They absolutely do, period. You cannot take someone's free will from them. They can give you their power, and I don't recommend doing that, but it happens. Uh, we do it frequently with our politicians uh, here in the United States especially, but I think across the world, most people that have politicians, we, we trust them. We give them our power, uh, and in a lot of cases, I don't think they're really using it well, frankly, but that's a whole separate topic for a whole separate day as well. But again, try to come around the, the whole concept of that specific someone and when you can definitely manifest who you're trying to manifest, and when it might not work. It might not work. You might try forever, and it may never happen. And I'll tell you what, when those cases are, are, are happening to you, it's really a good idea to start looking inward at yourself and why am I trying so hard to manifest this person? Because if it's meant to be, it will be, period, period. You putting the energy for it helps without a doubt, and the imagining activities helps without a doubt, makes an enormous difference. But if they're not going to have it, or if they're not interested, or if they're so hurt by you, or if they've so completely disconnected from you, they're not even going to feel you when you're doing the imaginal work. So there are times where you need to be discerning about what you're trying to do. There are experiences all over the place where this has worked, for sure, trying to manifest your specific someone. I think if it's the right scenarios, you'll definitely do that. And then there's lots of examples of people that have tried and tried and tried and never succeeded. Again, I think I speak to that example as well. There's reasons why sometimes we don't get what we want, or uh, to use kind of a Christian-y sort of God kind of concept, we, we oftentimes will pray to God. God always hears our prayers. Sometimes the answer is no. And there's a good reason for it. And if we got the answer we wanted, it actually caused probably more damage in our lives than we really, really want. And we don't see it or have the forethought or, or the uh, foresight to be able to tell what lies in front of us if we went down that path. So things to definitely consider. Uh, we started off with, um, what was that? It was Shania Twain doing You're Still the One, which I think is a very, very cool song. And I'm going to be going out with Coors. Breathless, uh, which is also a very good song. Uh, so please contact me, Spirit, uh, sorry, uh, Dan Radio Style at gmail.com. If you got any questions, comments, or queries, I will be recording my thing with Anya later today, so I doubt anyone's going to get any comments in. So it's probably too late for that one. But feel free to leave comments or questions that you'd like to see us discuss because our plan is to get together once a month and do a recording and, and see where that goes from that. So um, I think probably uh, eight hours or so from now, I should be recording with Agnes and uh, looking forward to it. It should be a lot of fun. And I've already sent her the questions. Specific someone's definitely part of it. So those of you watching this will definitely uh, enjoy some of the things we talk about, and it should be very, very cool. So hope you all enjoy. Dan Radio Style, going to be doing more shows as always, and my Good News uh, show will be coming out tomorrow as well. And I believe I'll be most likely dropping 
all the Anya stuff during the week next week. Uh, I'm not sure how many shows I'm going to get out of it, but um, I will cut those up uh, probably tomorrow, and we'll get those pushed out next week. So uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, somewhere around there, we should be pushing stuff out between the two of us. Uh, so hopefully you guys enjoy that as well. So thank you for joining me. Uh, going out with Breathless uh, by The Coors. From you.